All right, so we're getting to one of the more challenging and I think should be more fun portions of this project, and that's creating the Maloof joints uh, joining the legs to the seat. So I was a little bit intimidated about this process before I started. It's one of the reasons I really want to do this project. I like challenging myself and trying new tools and new techniques. And so I, I made mock-ups uh, just using crappy 2x4 lumber, so I wasn't going to uh, waste any expensive materials. So just like I've already done on the seat, uh, I cut the notches and then I routed in the rabbits. Um, I then took mock-ups of a, a front leg and a rear leg, I'm sorry, rear leg and front leg, um, notched those out so that they were going to fit nicely uh, over these. Just you see, first get this fit right on the squares. And then using a round over bit, uh, rounded over appropriately where those are going to come into uh, these portions of the turn uh, with the rabbit bit. So did a little bit of work back and forth until I got a really nice fit on those. Fit's not important on this mock-up here. Uh, what was important was that I got really comfortable with the process so that I knew when the time come to do this on my nice uh, real lumber that I spent a lot of time, effort, and money on that I wasn't going to be quite as nervous and less likely, hopefully, to screw it up. So, setting those aside, I have here, this is a rear leg, and this is a front leg. So these are the guys I just pattern routed, not too terribly long ago. And then I have the patterns. So set those aside for a second. My next task here is I'm going to bring these back on. When I made these patterns from the plans uh, from Canadian Woodworks, I was very careful to mark on these the location of these sort of mortise grooves that are going to become uh, that portion of the Maloof joint. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to start with the top of the Maloof joint. That's going to be my reference on, on all of the legs. I'm going to mark those very carefully all the way around on all four sides. And then once I've done that, then I'm going to set about uh, cutting this joinery. So there's a number of different ways that that can be done. Uh, I've contemplated a couple of different choices. I've played around uh, in, in doing these examples of a couple of different ways of doing them. You can do it on the table saw. Oh, you can do it on the table saw. You can do it with a router. You can do it by hand. You could do combinations of all of the above. And, I, and I've done a little bit of each. So I'm going to do the majority of these on the table saw. I'm going to start with just getting this lined up just perfectly. Come up on here with my square. I've got that one good mark now. Now using my square and making sure I'm using square reference faces for each of these. I'm going to bring that all the way around. Now I'm not using a knife here. Uh, normally for joinery I, I like using a knife rather than a pencil because you've got that nice uh, reference edge that you can drop chisels or other tools into. I'm using a, a uh, pencil here instead and the primary reason for that is I haven't necessarily decided which are the left legs and which are the right legs and depending on which side you're on uh, the joiner it, it's going to go on one side and not the other. Definitely don't want to mess up and do both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark these all the way around. I'm going to spend some time looking at how these are going to be most attractive uh, by side. I'm going to choose sides and then I'll start getting ready to cut the joint. Okay, so that's now marked all the way around. They met up perfectly, so it's square, at least from the reference edges I used. I'm gonna do that on all four of the legs, and then we're gonna to go to cutting some joinery next. Okay, I apologize because it's a little bit goofy looking, but this was really sort of the best camera angle I could come up with to, sh to show how I'm gonna cut uh, the grooves in here for the Maloof joints. So, uh, rather than building a dedicated sled, I just decided to use one of my miter gauges. Uh, I screwed on an auxiliary fence here, which is a piece of plywood. It's only two inches tall because I wanted to make sure I could clamp really easily over top. I want to keep my clamps out of the way, uh, and yet I want to get a good, tight, secure fit so that when I cut this joinery, it's just dead square. Uh, a couple other things I did, uh, I wanted to get a secure hold, so I took pieces of cutoffs with some curves in them, and I put these two pieces on the side so I could clamp those. I also took a scrap, and in cutting the scrap, I made sure I had my dado stack set to the height I wanted, which is a half inch, uh, pretty much on the, on, on the nose. 
I also, from that scrap, came back and marked very clearly uh, the insides of the cut. So some of these cuts I'm going to be referencing the right side of the blade, some I'm going to be cutting the, referencing the left side of the blade, and I want to make sure I can do all of those very clearly. M most of these I'm going to be starting, the reference is going to be the top side of, of the groove, and then I'll move down from there and cut it to fit. So each of these two lines that are on here, uh, hoping they come up on camera, they're just inside of the cut. So I took this piece, you may not be able to see this yet, and you'll see it from the other side for sure. Line this up so that it is just, just on the inside of that uh, Sharpie line there. And then I clamped this with this flat reference face on this fence. Once I had that clamped and secured, I brought these two support pieces in from the side. I clamped those. So I can just walk away, go back, do whatever I want to do. Um, if, if I was going to be doing a ton of these, maybe building a dedicated sled so I'm sliding in both miter slots would be better. Uh, but for the couple I'm going to be doing here, just being careful, going slow, making sure this whole thing doesn't rack as I push it forward, I think I'm going to be in pretty good shape. So that's the setup. Uh, I'm going to be able to flip and do these from both sides because I'm going to have to cut the rights and the lefts, uh, cut on the inside, and they're going to go in the opposite direction. This is a back leg. Front legs are going to be very similar, except it's it's just going to be in that sort of square section at the top where I'm going to cut the Maloof joint. So that's the setup. Sorry for the long-winded explanation, uh, but I think it's important to understand how to do this right so that I know they're going to be repeatable. They're all going to come out in the same spot. Okay, so now I've made the first two cuts on the fronts and the insides of the back legs. On the front legs, let me grab one. I've made two cuts. One is on the front face, which is the reference face, and then the inside. I have not, I wasn't able to cut the uh, sort of back side of the front legs because this uh, reference surface I can't set up on that saw because of the curve over here. So this I'm going to probably do either with a router by hand, I haven't decided yet, we'll get to that a little bit later. But uh, now, I need to figure out, I started at the top reference surface for each of these, now I need to cut them to the width that I need. So the width on those is going to come right off of here. So I'm actually going to match, measure each one and sort of do them, sneak up on it until they fit one at a time. I could go around and measure, and they should be darn close to exactly the same, if not the same, but rather than assuming that and, and making an error and having a gap in the joiner, which is going to look like crap and not be that strong, I'm just going to do each one individually. So I could measure with a, with a mic micrometer caliper here. Um, we could do that, measure each one, um, set the difference, and make that second cut. I don't want to hit it on the first one. I want it to be a little shy, so it's too tight, and then slowly get there. Another option is to actually hold it right up to where it's going to be. So this is the front, this is the rear right leg. So this is this guy here. Um, 
These are lined up perfectly in the front, so I did a pretty good job on this one. Not quite as good as some of the others. I have to clean some of those up by hand. So I can hold it up right to this joint here. I want to make sure I'm using a reference face that I can see when I go down on the table and not have to work them all the way around. So um, just bring this up on the edge. I can make a mark. Based on how I made that mark, I know I want to leave the pencil on there. So this little engineering square. Hopefully I didn't step out of frame, but the little engineering square there. We'll come around on this side. So I now have two references to, to set up for those no, next two cuts on the saw. In fact, I made that one. No, that's going to be okay. Based on how I'm going to set them up on the saw. Uh, so let's just sort of do this one. We'll, we'll do one sort of on the camera till we get to fit and then I'll just go and do all the rest off camera. Okay, I don't know if you can see. So there's a second cut here, not yet on this face. So I'm going to look at this first one for fit. Whoa. All right, that, that is just within the tiniest little whisker. Um, because that's so close, I'm actually going to cut this mating one next. Um, and I'll use this surface to line up outside tooth there to make that cut, um, like so. Then we'll come back and just, just take off the tiniest little whisker until I get it to fit perfectly. So this will take a couple passes back and forth. That was maybe a little closer than I actually wanted to get on that first pass, but... Uh, line that up and cut. Actually, I'm going to line them now. I'm using this outside tooth here. I'm actually bringing the piece right up against that, applying the clamp in the middle. I make sure I'm pushing down so that reference surface is flat. Uh, then I'm bringing these spacer blocks in. I don't want to create any pressure up or down to pull that out of square um, versus that reference surface on the bottom. And then that guy's ready to cut, so I'll adjust the camera and make that cut. Okay, so this may not be the absolute best way to show this on camera, but I went back and forth uh, probably another four passes on here, and I sort of worked my way up to getting a close to the fit I'm looking for. So it's still pretty snug. Um, it, it gets in there. You can see this is still square. That's going to have to be cut to a radius. Uh, to fix this, fit this a little bit later. I'd rather have it be a little snug right now than too loose. Uh, but for the moment, I'm pretty comfortable with that fit, but that's gonna glue up pretty nice. So off camera, I'm gonna go and do the rest. Okay, so I've got this guy clamped here in the vise. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, this top reference, I'm gonna carry that across. Uh, now, instead of using a pencil as I did before, I'll use a knife. So. Um, you actually use the knife on the wall of this to establish that first reference because I know that is going to be dead nuts and flush. Bring that across. Just light passes, scribe, you want to break and cut the fibers, uh, don't go crazy. Uh, multiple shallow passes is better than one big deep pass. The second guy up. I'm going to start with it being a little bit away from this other wall. I'd rather have it be a little snug and adjust than have it be too loose. Again, light scoring line, followed by several additional passes. So I could carry them. I'm going to carry those lines down on this side as well. So we'll take it out of the out of the vise real quick. I'm going to do these with pencil. This one's already there. These are just references, visual references for sawing. Now for the depth, 
Uh, I've taken and set up my old Stanley router plane. Anybody who doesn't have one of these, I suggest you go get on eBay and get yourself one. I had this set to the depth, um, and I'm going to use that to just mark across the back here the bottom line. So no need to set up a marking gauge. Just, just do the whole thing right here with the router plane. I'm going to do it on the inside as well. Just so that is right around a half inch. So now I'm going to just use my dovetail saw using my thumbnail as a guide. Actually, let's take one, let's do one more step just to make sure we, we're confident in this. So using a chisel, I'm going to go to those knife lines that we did a second ago. Just take off a little notch. Doesn't need to be huge. Instead of that just being a simple knife line, it's now a small V. And the saw will just register down in that against this reference edge, which is the knife line. Again, using my thumb, but really it's that, that wall there now that I created. So I cut straight down on my reference line, and I paid attention to the line I created on the bottom with the router clean. I'm just going to make an extra cut right down the middle. Okay, now with the chisel, I can just take out a lot of the bulk of that material. Now I'm just going to check with the router plane, see how close we are. We got some some work to do, but now you're not going to see this inside edge, but I'd rather have that be nice and crisp and square, so I have as much glue surface area as possible. Take a little more. Okay, so it's done, it's clean, depth is right. Width maybe a little tight for now, uh, but we're gonna test fit this and go back and forth until we get where we want it.
So at this stage, a um, fair amount of sort of finicky uh, work, concentrating on getting these joints fitted exactly. So I had them just sort of rough fit earlier. Uh, now I'm going to pay a lot more attention to, uh, with a chisel, cleaning out the inside corners of these notches I originally kit, uh, cut on the bandsaw, uh, making sure there's no burrs or edges on the insides of these rabbits, uh, using the router plane uh, on all these surfaces to make sure that I've got these uh, grooves down to the depth where they will seat in such that the walls are completely flush. And then finally, uh, either back onto the router table or hopefully you're super close and just with a little more tune-up with a sandpaper, uh, refining the shapes of these curves such that these will come in and fit uh, just dead nuts not only in so they're they're snug and it's going to form a nice strong joint but so that you get a really good close fit in and around here so that it's not only going to be mechanically strong but very very uh, good looking joint aesthetically before and then after once we start doing some of the power carving so I'm going to do that on all of the front and the rear legs and then the, I'm going to set the legs aside at that point and then I'm going to start shaping uh, power carving on the seat. So let me spin the camera around so you can see that fit I achieved on this guy. I'm going to do that on both the front legs and the rear legs and then we're going to move on to making a giant mess which is going to be a lot of fun.